Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Joshua Martin and today I'm going to be showing you all some cool little transitional tricks for time lapses. I call them push-ins, punch-ins if you want to say. This effect right here. A couple weeks back, Omar and I, who both work for University of Miami, uh, we wanted to create something visually stunning, uh, fast-paced hype that will that will kind of show the campus in a beautiful style. So we decided to use time lapses as the visual of choice to you know depict uh, how beautiful the campus is and have like as much detail as possible. Also, we included hyperlapses as well. I'm gonna post the video in the description below. And to be honest, like that was a really that was a first time for me doing hyperlapses. I've done small some time lapses, but time lapses always got me confused about timing, intervals, things like that. So the more I'm doing it, the better I'm getting. If you once you watch the video, you'll see that there's some punch in some some transitions, and um, I got that inspiration from another video, um, a time lapse about LA, and man, that was just beautiful the way. Um, it transitioned to each location, the timing, the uh, fluidity of it. It was it was just gorgeous. I'm like, how did they do that? So I just try to research, but there's no there's nothing clear about how to get certain, some of those transitions. So I struggle with it. I try to figure it out myself. We're getting After Effects, and I finally figured out some things that look as similar. And um, I just want to share you share with you all how to do that. I want to walk you through some things, the processing of the image, then we're going to jump into After Effects and add some music and then uh, see what comes out. So as you can see here, we got some beautiful callouts and Lightroom's kind of slow with this, but if we can quickly zoom through, nope, can't do that. Well, not going to do that, but let me tell you my camera setting. So I shoot with a Nikon D750, one of the best cameras you can ever buy. And so built into the Nikon systems, which is kind of nice, they already have time-lapse modes. So they have built-in intervalometers there. If you don't know what an intervalometer is, basically is. <music> Canon, unfortunately, doesn't have that. Um, you'll have to buy a tool, like an actual intervalometer to attach to the camera. So my camera settings were f1.7 at ISO 100 at a shutter speed of 800 of a second. I'm shooting with the Tamron 30, 17 to 35 f2.8 and it had to, I had it zoomed in um, all the way to 35 because what we're going to do, we're going to punch into certain details of this. So when we're doing a video, we're going to see details of this clouds here and we're going to back out and we're going to go somewhere else like over here. So we're going to just play around with the frame. So with the Nikon D750, there are two modes of time lapses. There's the regular mode that shoots in the full resolution of the camera. So all 24 megapixels will be used. The You can use the six, uh, 6016 by 4016. So that, that's basically a 6K image because you're using each and every frame. Uh, the second mode they have is more of a uh, compressed version, and it only shoots in 1080p, but it's a faster and smaller file, and it has and it has an automatically it automatically stitches it together. So the first version is this time intervals, and that gives you every single frame, so you can use every single frame. With the other version, that shoots the time lapse, but it compresses it into a video mode already. All right, enough of all that. Let's just process this real quick. I'm going to use the music from Odessa. I really like the Odessa soundtracks. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just try to colorize it to fit how that song sounds. So let's do this. Now, I shot this a stopover, so you can see in the history, it was a little stop, stopover, and that's fine. That's totally fine. Bam! I always do this as a reference point to see what the camera's going to, what Lightroom's going to try to bring out. And I think it's pretty dramatic. I don't mind it being like this. And after, before, and after. This is the this is the beautiful thing about shooting raw images for time lapses. You have the ability to completely uh, edit the heck out of it and still retain all the detail. Look how look how we're moving this histogram. It's great. Get the right color balance, white balance. I mean, let me just do these real quick. Oh, I did not want to do that. 
Let's go to profile. Let's make sure we're on the camera so we get the distortion. It was minimal distortion because I was zoomed in on it. And do I want to colorize this at all? I, I want to keep it punchy. Let's just change the blue. Let's just change that to a, just a wacky, out of this world type. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool, actually. Let's just leave it green. Let me just desat. Nope. Let's just keep it saturated. I want to darken it, lighten it. Let's keep it like a little light. I have right now. I have no preference. I'm just just making a silly as mess. So let's just keep this. Let's copy this. Command C. We're going to copy everything about this. So you keep everything checked. You don't have to worry about this stuff because I didn't crop anything. But we're going to copy this. We're going to hit G, highlight everything, and hit sync settings. And this is going to apply our edit to every single image. Export all of this because now we're going to edit this video in After Effects and show you what this tutorial is really about. So let's go to Premiere. All right, uh, time lapse. You see, I've been working on a few already. Let's just call this Cloudy Three. Why not? And create and save. So we're going to keep it at full resolution, so six thousand by four thousand. So we're not going to resize it, but we're going to keep the resolution down because since it's going on a screen, resolution doesn't really apply to different screens. It's more about the the size of the image rather than how many pixel, um, how many resolution per pixel it is. So um, and let's rename these to. Let's just do it just in a sequence because what's oops. Because After Effects needs to make sure that each and every image is in a sequence so it can say, oh, these all go together. And we're going to hit export. And that's going to take a while. So let me just speed this video up.